I've been using Flutterflow for a while now. And after trying out many of the no-code tools on the market, I'm more than convinced that Flutterflow is perfect, not just for beginners, but also for people with some experience. And so in this video, I want to share with you 10 must-know tips and tricks in order to take your Flutterflow to the next level and make building apps a lot more enjoyable. My first tip is that you want to simulate getting a response from an event using a wait condition. So as an example, I have here a sample page and I have here a button. Now the user is going to click this button and they're going to be expecting something to happen. Either, you know, we're going to read some data, we're going to send some data, we're going to receive some data, we're going to perform some kind of a calculation. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's going to take some time typically. And it's a good idea to simulate that wait. And the way you do it is by clicking on the button, going over here, clicking the flow editor, and you want to add this action called wait. You're going to have a delay. And typically you want to set it maybe 2000 uh, milliseconds, which is two seconds. And then you want to have your other action. So let's say we are redirecting to, I don't know, to a page somewhere, we are re uh, redirecting to Google or something. So you can have something like this. The other thing you want to make sure that you do is you select this button first, come over here, go down, and make sure the show loading indicator is set to true. And now when you run your app, you're going to have a very, very nice and expected behavior. Okay, so here's the page. If we click calculate, you see how it waits a little bit. And then it redirects or does what the user expected. In my view, this is very, very nice behavior in many situations. My next tip is that you want to use local store as the source of truth for a lot of the state that's happening on the page in order to make your app a lot more interactive and interesting. For instance, let's say we have a lot of widgets, a lot of elements, a lot of things happening on this specific page. We have this uh, page title, we have this list, we have a text widget here, and we have a button. And what I want to do is, uh, whenever the user presses on this button, I want these values to recalculate in some way, shape, or form. And I want it to be done interactively. I don't want to reload the page. So the way you do it is by holding the values and binding them in the local state. So for instance, let's add a state variable. I'm going to call it a string var. And it's going to be a string. I'm going to say create. I'm just going to say this is a default value. Okay, if we don't touch it, this is what the value is set to. Then we come back here. And this is the important part. Now what you want to do is you want to bind the elements to that local state variable. Okay, so we're going to come here, set from variable, local state, bind it here, and then bind this one as well. Okay, local state, bind it here. And now when you click on this button, it's going to set that local state variable, which is going to be automatically reflected in these widgets here. Come to calculate button, and then you add an action, update local state, select our local state, set value, specific value, new value. Okay, that's it. Reload the app. So here's the app. And if we click on this button, these values automatically recalculate. And that is one quick way to make your app super interactive without reloading the pages. The next tip that I have for you is when you have a situation where you have a list view leading to a detail view. What you want to do is you want to pass the reference to the document of the fields that you want to show on the detail view. And you want to unpack, basically load the document from the reference as the very first thing that you do all the way at the top of the page. So let me show you what I mean. So here I have a list view with each of the items leading to a detail view. So if I click here, I have some detail information. And what I want to do is I want to get the field, the reference from the list view, unpack it, get all the fields and list them here. And the structure that I have in my schema, basically I have a shopping list and each of the 
records leads to a user that owns that item in the list. So I have a shopping list. Owner ID is a doc reference to users. And so what I want to do is on that main detail page, I want to show all of this user information. And there's a really, really nice pattern that you can use over and over and over again. So what you want to do is you have your list, you're going to have your navigation and I'm passing in the user reference, which is basically the field that's called the owner ID. And then what I need to do is I need to go to the user detail page and as the top element, the very, very top element here, it's called user details. What we're going to do is we're going to get document from reference. I call this unpacking because we're taking a reference and we're getting a record, which are basically two different things. And I'm going to say, I want a user and I want the user reference. Now, when I do that, I now have the user record available in all the widgets here, in every single widget on this page. So that means I can come in here, I can set from variable, I can just pull up my user's document. And I can say, well, I want this to be email and then something else, I want it to be something else. So if we reload this page, so here's my list view, I go to the detail view and now I have access to every single field in the user record so that I can show them here. And you want to do this all the way on top. My next tip is that you want to use the powerful map items functionality of Flutterflow whenever you are dealing with sub collections and you need to deal with a specific field in that sub collection. So let me show you what I mean. So this is my user profile page. Okay. So I have all the user information, but in my schema, I have users and then I have a sub collection called reviews. And so as a result, I have a review sub collection, that review sub collection has five documents, each containing a single field called rating that's an integer. And so let's assume you want to display an aggregate. You don't want to display a list. You want to display an aggregate. For instance, you want to display a sum or you want to display an average. How would you do that? Well, the first thing that you want to do is you're going to have something like this. And here, let's say you want to display an average. The first thing that we need to do is to load the reviews for the specific user. We're going to do it here, come here, query collection, reviews from variable for the specific user, user ref, list of. Next, we are going to come here and we're going to say set from variable and we would need to do it using a custom function. This is what the custom function looks like, get average rating. We can take a look. This function returns a double, which is an average, and it takes as, as its one argument, a list of values. And from that list of values, it calculates an average. And this is how all aggregate type fields work. You want to calculate a sum, it's going to be similar. You want to calculate a standard deviation, it's going to be similar, it doesn't matter. This is what the code looks like. Basically, we are summing up all the values and we are dividing by the number of values. And I've gotten this code using the AI generated code functionality here. We have this function, but the trick is, how do you pass it the specific list of values that you need in order to calculate the average? Well, you say from variable, you come in here, you pick your reviews document, and you say map list items. Then you come in here and you pick the items that you want, the field, which field do you want to create a list from? We're going to say rating, confirm, confirm. And now we are passing a list of just the rating values from the entire document, from the entire sub collection, really. And this is very, very powerful. So we're, so we're going to say confirm. And now this becomes an aggregate. So let's go ahead and run this app. Okay, let's go ahead here. And this is the average 3.4. And that's from the values 1, 3, 2, 3, and 8. Looks about right to me. My next tip is you always want to be checking available callbacks for new and unfamiliar UI elements. Okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, this is a UI element. Okay? If we come in here and we open the flow editor here. 
you're going to see callbacks. These are callbacks, meaning that if you do something to that element, Flutterflow is going to let you know and you can build your action of the specific callback. So with a button, you have on tap, on double tap, on long press. Um, if you come in here, the image, let's check the image. It's the same thing on tap, on double tap, on long press. Let's take a look at something else. How about we come back to our list view and we come in here. What do we have? Same thing on tap, on double tap, on long press. But what if you want to use a new and unfamiliar element, an unfamiliar widget, a widget that you haven't used before? For instance, Flutterflow recently released the stackable widget. So if you come in here, you want to add it, you can just search for it. Swipeable stack, that's what it's called. We're just going to replace it. And we have the swipeable stack here, okay? Now, if you come in here, actions, you open, you have completely different callbacks. So you have on widget swipe, on left swipe, on right swipe, on up swipe, on down swipe. And these give you new possibilities. They give you new ways to build your app, okay? And so this is completely different from a button, from a text field, from anything else. And yes, for the most part, you're gonna have very, very similar callbacks. So you're gonna have callbacks that look exactly like this. But as Flutterflow, keeps improving their product as they keep releasing new features, they keep adding new widgets, you will have to double check what exactly are those callbacks because not knowing these callbacks is going to make your life as a developer, as a no-code engineer a lot harder. And so one of the very first things that you want to do when there's a new widget that you're not familiar with, you want to check their callbacks so that you know how to work with that widget in the most efficient way possible. My next tip is that you must know how to generate a custom list from the generate dynamic children functionality. So here we have a page with a list view, a card and some text. And the idea is that inside this list view, we're going to repeat these cards. So we're basically going to repeat this card X amount of times. Okay. And typically, in most situations, you can essentially choose list view, come in here and do a query type. But what if you need a custom list, maybe a list from uh, A to Z or number zero to nine or, you know, a predefined list that you have stored elsewhere. Maybe it's, you know, a list in your, cost in your local store or it's somewhere else. What if you need a predefined custom list? Well... In that case, you're going to be using generate dynamic children. So you can use it using your source here. And so for instance, if you have a list in local store, this is not a list, but if you had a list, you can pick it here and you can generate it. But what if you really need a truly custom list? Well, in that case, custom function is your savior because you can simply click on create new function and you're going to be returning a list, let's say a list of strings. We're going to say true, nullable, false, and we're going to say get list. We're not going to take any arguments. And all we're going to do is we're going to return the list. A really simple example would look something like this. You're going to define a list. You're going to assign a bunch of elements. In this case, we have five elements consisting of these words. And you're going to return the list. Okay, we're going to hit save, confirm. We're going to give this list uh, a name. We're going to call it items, confirm. Now, all we have to do is select the text field, replace it with the items value and reload the app. And this is what we get. We get a custom list from the values that we specified. Now, we can take this further. Instead of having a list view, we can do something else. We can have a grid view. Inside, we can have a card and then we can have a text. We can create a new custom function, get list. And now this function is going to return a list of integers integer list come in here have a list and we can do something like save items and then replace this with the item we can make it even a little bit bigger reload that and now we are looking at a nice keypad that you can implement inside any one of your apps The next tip for you is that you want to make sure you are using this empty list widget functionality. 
this is very very helpful and it's very very powerful because it saves you from coding all of these edge cases whenever you don't have any data and you can't show the proper list let me show you how it works here we have a list which is essentially loaded from this get list function that returns a list of numbers so one through nine and so if you run this app right now you're going to see a list of numbers one through nine but let's say for one reason or another you ended up with a list view but your list is empty okay so for instance let's say we have this list view here we come in here we're going to return an empty list we're going to simulate that behavior we're going to say just return an empty list so something like this I'm going to check for errors confirm now we do not want to display nothing we want to let the user know that the data they're trying to get is empty they need to know that right that it improves the the user experience and so we're going to go back to our list view we're going to come here and we're going to be showing this empty list widget what is an empty list widget well it's pretty much anything right so we can come in here we can just create this widget go to the top level we can go one of these templates here and there's an empty list right here so we're going to choose that and we're going to add a column and you can simply select it right here right click and say convert to component we're going to say empty widget add component and now this is a separate component come back here and now you can delete it here we don't need it and you can specify so we're going to go to this list view show list empty widget select it component empty widget okay you can also pass parameters and all that we don't need that and now if you reload the app you're going to see your empty list widget because we are purposely passing in an empty list in order to simulate that behavior and this is very very important and using this functionality is very very powerful otherwise it gets very complicated and trust me you do not want to go there my next tip is that you want to use stacks and conditions to show different elements so let me show you what i mean here i have a simple list and inside the list i want to show a check mark if a certain item is true for instance if something is completed something was purchased something was done i want to show this check mark if it isn't completed i want to show an empty box okay so without the check mark so how would you do that well one way of doing it is that you can create a stack and inside the stack you can have multiple widgets that will be shown depending on a certain condition okay so in this app we have a shopping list so if we come in here we have a shopping list and inside the shopping list we have a bunch of fields we have the name of the item that we need to purchase and the done field right whether this was purchased or not and for the most part these are true except broccoli so broccoli is false broccoli has not been purchased which is very very bad because i love broccoli and so what we're going to do is we're going to create a stack and inside we are going to put two items, two tiles. One we're going to call unchecked and one we're going to call checked. Okay, so if you take a look at this, if we remove checked and we put it up here, you will see that all of these unchecked, they're basically boxes with nothing in there. Okay, but if I put this tile checked back in there inside the stack, it shows on top but really there are two elements there now for the tile unchecked we only wanted to show when we only wanted to show when something is not done when done is false and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here we're gonna enable conditional visibility and we're gonna go to shopping list and we're gonna say done but we're gonna say opposite because this is unchecked that means done is false that means it hasn't been done I'm gonna say confirm and for tile checked we're going to come in here we're going to enable conditional visibility we're going to choose our field done and we're going to leave it as is so checked means it's done and so when this app runs only one of these fields is going to show both of these will never show because they're opposites of each other so let's go ahead and run this app 
and here's our app as you can see everything is checked except broccoli which is not checked as you see here done is false everything else is true and this is a very very powerful method to display various widgets depending on the particular conditions and you're going to see this all over the place my next tip is to take advantage of recommended json paths when you're doing api calls okay so as an example i have this mock api that essentially returns to me a bunch of random data so this is what i get i get random names random avatars id created at and i can create any data that i want but i have this user data and i want to use it inside my app okay and so what i need to do first is i need to come in here and i need to create a new api call i'm gonna come in here i'm gonna say get people and i'm gonna paste my url okay i'm gonna come to response and test i'm gonna say test api call i want to make sure i have access to it everything is good and now what's nice is i can come to recommend the under json paths and it basically tells me some lists that i can use quick shortcuts so for instance there's i can use this json path to get a list of names i can use this json path to get a list of dates list of avatars or list of ids well the only thing i'm really interested in is the list of names because as it happens i am interested in displaying a list of names so i'm gonna click on select it i'm gonna go to select it i'm gonna give this a name i'm gonna say names and i'm gonna say add call now this call is saved and now i can use it along with the json path for an easy way of getting and manipulating the data so we're going to come back here i have my list view ready here we're going to say api call get people confirm and then we're going to go to generate dynamic children we're going to give it a name people and we're going to say this is going to be from get people response this is our api response we're going to say json body json path and we're going to pick names confirm 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 next we need to change this text here to actually display the item people item confirm and let's reload the app and now we have a result of just the names because that recommended json path gives us a list of just the names which is exactly what we want and so definitely leverage that as much as you can provided that it applies in your specific use case and last but definitely not least do not hesitate to create custom widgets this is one of the most powerful features of flutterflow as well as flutter so definitely do not shy away from it instead go the other way and try to learn as much about it as you can let me show you so if you come in here you have your custom functions custom widgets and custom actions we've already created a bunch of custom functions let's go ahead and try to create a custom widget so if you come in here create let's call it a sample widget let's check out the boilerplate copy to editor and this is our sample widget okay we can just hit save compile you always got to compile okay there are no errors let's go ahead and try to display this widget we just created let's go ahead and delete this this column here and now if you come in here we see the sample widget which is the widget we create if you click on it there's nothing there we can specify a width a height it doesn't do anything let's go ahead and make it a little bit more useful okay come in here let's add a parameter we're gonna say sample my text it's going to be a string and we're gonna create more boilerplate copy to editor now it has that my text in there and now we can do something like this we have a container this is returning a container we can go in here and, and we can say child and now our container which was empty before is now going to be returning a text field along with the text that we are going to be specifying as an argument so let's go ahead and compile and preview this and now we're previewing the widget we can make it a little bit bigger 
width of 500, height of 500, and we can change the text that we're supplying. This is new text, and it displays it here. We can hit save, come back here, and now it's previewing along with the text. We have default text, but we can specify new text here. This is new text. Look at that. And now it displays it here. And this is a widget that you can, you know, wrap inside a container, another container. You can do wrap widget. You can wrap it inside a stack, inside a list view, inside a, a wrap, a form, uh, a card really. So you can do it instead of a card. And then you can maybe add some padding to the card. You can even add a wrap it inside a con um you can change the color, something like this maybe, so it's visible. And so when it comes to building widgets, this is just the beginning. Teaching you how to build widgets from scratch would take many, many hours. But I wanted to let you know that widgets are the building blocks of Flutter and Flutterflow. And so do not shy away from creating widgets because that is a sure way of customizing your app exactly how you want it to be done. And so that is the tips that I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you've gotten value here. Check out my Patreon page for more content and I'll see you in a future video.